the Truth the Girls. Hi everyone, it's Truth the Girl Sonia here. Well, let's talk about the Trump shithole fiasco. So apparently last Thursday, according to the Washington Post, President Trump grew frustrated with lawmakers in the Oval Office when they discussed protecting immigrants from Haiti, El Salvador, and African countries as part of a bipartisan immigration deal, according to several people briefed on the meeting. Why are we having all these people from shithole countries come here, Trump said, according to these people, referring to countries mentioned by the lawmakers. Well, that didn't go over very well. Uh, it's kind of really blown up huge all over the media. All you hear is about how Trump called uh, basically third world countries uh, shithole countries. For the most part, what people are discussing is uh, how obviously uncouth Trump is, how racist he is. Uh, you know what? I'm seeing something different though than what everybody is talking about regarding this. Now, before you jump to a conclusion that I'm like a big Trump supporter or I'm a very anti-Trump person, but I'm actually Canadian, which means that like 93% of Canadian women, I support Prime Minister Justin Trudeau because he's hot. The other 7% are obviously lesbians. Well, I'm Canadian, so I'm going to try to give you my very objective perspective as a neutral Canadian. First of all, for what it's worth, Trump himself denies having used the word shithole which could only mean one of two things. Either he's lying or the media is lying and it's a smear campaign. But here's what I'm seeing. You see, right now they're trying to make it out like Trump is the worst. He is uncouth, he's rude, he's a racist. He calls countries shitholes, really just third world countries. The worst anyone has ever seen in the White House. It's a terrible, terrible man. And yet what I'm seeing is actually uh, he's really not that different from anyone else who's been in there, except that the others being blue bloods have this blue blood ability to be very good at presenting themselves and very diplomatic. But inside they can be extremely rotten, you know, uh, very elitist and maybe inside they all they all think third world countries are shitholes but they just will never let you know that they're not gonna say that but, but Trump uh, he, he doesn't have that kind of self-control and decorum and diplomacy so he just kind of says it all but he's really just saying things that other people think anyway not me not you but some people who are you know in the elites they probably think this way and I have proof if you want to start with proof I would recommend three books the first one very important is by Professor Michelle Chastodovsky it's called The Globalization of Poverty and the New World Order and this will explain how the IMF works to come in there and screw things up basically how countries are tricked into growing commodity crops oh you're gonna get rich doing this they get funding for this. People who grow them have subsidies. Now nobody's growing food. Country becomes reliant on imports for food. Totally screws up the economy. We have seeds of destruction. All about how GMOs have been used to undermine economies, to undermine agriculture, to undermine countries' self-reliance and independence, to cause a lot of problems. You have farmers who have GMO crops that are not allowed to replant their seeds. You know, they, they, there were people killing themselves in India because they were going bankrupt. Lots of poverty created by GMOs. Uh, Argentina was another one. The soybeans in Argentina, they're, they used to have very diversified crops. Start growing soybeans. It, it became a disaster. Oh, well, except for the GMO companies. And the pesticides that are used. Lots of pollution. Lots of really disastrous effects from GMOs. And the third one, if you haven't read it already, is um, John Perkins' Confessions of an Economic Hitman. I don't have the cover, but this is the book. And he discloses how economic hitmen are sent into countries so that those countries can be convinced to get loans from the IMF to uh, build all this great infrastructure and it's going to really bring them into the modern age. And yet they're never able to pay that stuff back because who really profits from this are the multinationals, mostly American companies, who go in there 
who have this funding then to go in, they're given the funding because it's like a whole big network conspiracy thing. They're given the funding to go in there, set up shops, set up factories. It destroys the environment. The people who were self-reliant now work for those factories. At a pittance, they're, I mean, it just completely screws everything up. Creation of poverty, creation of shithole countries, as they put it, is really a product of imperialism. And to prove to you that Trump is not the only one who thinks this way of third world countries, there's a couple things I could bring up. First of all, Haiti, uh, which came up in relation to these comments. The earthquake in Haiti in 2010, the response was from the UN, from America also, and the Bush Clinton fund collected a lot of money from a lot of people to supposedly go help Haiti. Well, I happen to remember that officially only 10% of that funding was given to the Haitian government. It was said that they couldn't be trusted with the money. They couldn't be trusted to run their own affairs. What does that tell you about the people who, who took this money? Who are they really taking it for? Who benefited from that? Weeks into the relief efforts, Chelsea Clinton herself said the incompetence is mind-numbing. Nothing was moving. The UN people I encountered were frequently out of touch, anachronistic in their thinking at best and arrogant and incompetent at worst. They never really sorted it out for Haiti. They, they didn't really help them with all the money they had. People were still living in tents. Months later, years later, even now, it has never really been sorted out. The UN was supposed to bring relief. What they brought was cholera. And here we are years later, and Haiti has never been rebuilt. And here's another one from 1994. Don't forget the Rwandan genocide. When there was a huge massacre going on in Rwanda, and everybody was saying to the American government, you got to get in there and do something. And you know what? They had vehicles there. They, they had the military um, forces ready. They could have intervened and they didn't. They held back. And I remember at the time it was in the news that they were, they were having meetings and meetings and discussing and discussing. And then, oh, you know, it's over. We don't have to do anything. You know why? Because I'm pretty sure that as far as they're concerned, Rwanda is a shithole. They don't care what happens. So they didn't intervene. But you know, these are not shithole countries. These are third world countries. As I told you, there's a reason why a lot of them are not doing very well. But people who want to emigrate to America, that's not the people from Norway, Trump, hate to tell you. He, he said, did he really say this? Who knows what he really said. But according to the, the media, he says that he liked to see people coming in from Norway. Really? I don't think Norwegians are clamoring to get into the U.S., uh, yeah, Norwegians are not really, um, you know, banging at the door so much, but they are, they are receiving Americans. <laughs> They're saying, Americans, you're welcome to come to Norway because if you don't like where you're living, if you feel like it's turning into a shithole, maybe, you know, you're tired of the tent cities and the homelessness and all the poverty and the gang stuff and all the problems you have, you can come to Norway. So Trump, don't hold your breath. I don't think it's going to be Norwegians. Who emigrates? It's people from countries a lot of times where they feel like they don't have the opportunity. Either there's a war or there's poverty and they come to America because America always had the reputation as the land of opportunity. This was the place where people could come and make a new life for themselves. So isn't that what America was always about? And now all of a sudden it's about what? It's like an elite club where only people who are already doing well can come and join. I don't think that's how it was ever intended to be. What happened to receiving the huddled masses? I guess that went out a long time ago. This is not a good mentality, obviously. It seems to me quite un-American, actually. But on the other hand, it's not only Trump. I see a lot of evidence of this being quite pervasive. So yeah, that's it. So something to think about. And uh, thanks for giving me a thumbs up. Thank you for your support on Patreon. Thanks for listening to me, and I'll see you next time.